Hello, folks out there. This episode of the podcast is partnered by Audible. Greg, you know what I love about Audible? What do you love about Audible, I don't have to pick up a book anymore and carry it around with me. In fact, I carry it around in my phone, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They literally keep thousands of titles right on your phone, accessible at any time when you're driving, when you're cooking, when you're mowing the lawn, changing a diaper, doesn't matter. It's all right there at your fingertips, John. They've got podcasts, they've got lectures, they've got some like health and wellness and like fitness series on there that if you just are looking for something to fill that gap, like you're not getting into a book right now, it's all there for you, man. If you're a member, Greg, what's cool about it is you get three titles per month. The first one, you can pick whatever you want. Like I've said, I'll probably start hitting up some of those health and wellness books. And then what's awesome is they have two Audible exclusives exclusives folks you can't get it anywhere else it's true that is very true so if you guys want to get on the audible train you can go to audibletrial.com slash j-a-t-g that stands for johnny and the greg hook, hook yourself up with a 30-day free trial no promises, no nothing. If you don't like it, which I can't imagine you're not going to like it. Um, it, you can cancel at any time. But the great thing about that is the books you get during your free trial or if at any time, those books are yours. Like you get to keep them. You can listen to them nonstop, anytime, all the time. Sounds like a deal to me, man. So if you guys are smart, like I know you guys are, because you already listened to this podcast, sign yourself up, guys. What do you got to lose? It's a 30-day free trial. Yeah. And it's books. It's knowledge. Got to drink it up. It is. Yes. So one more time, it is audibletrial.com slash J-A-T-G. Greg, tonight's the night. And what I mean by tonight, 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 uh, tonight tonight's, the, tonight's, tonight's the night. Tonight is nights. the beginning of the 2021 football season. There will be a football game moving from this Thursday all the way until the end of the year in February. I'm sorry, until the beginning of the new year of February. This is this is this is the last. Yesterday was the last day of no football. That seems so odd. And I think it's because I actually paid attention to basketball this year. Yes, that would be odd. <laughs> because the Milwaukee Bucks were involved. I mean, they yeah. were involved previous years too, but they were really involved this year. Yeah. And so the entire state was just living and breathing basketball. Yeah. And then we've had a couple weeks, so the Brewers doing pretty well. And now we're looking at Packer season again, which I know for some people, like baseball is still a really big deal, but I know more people that football season absolutely dwarfs all other sports. It does. So it does. That uh, the two most popular sports in America, I think by views or like television ratings or something like that, it's NFL, college football. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Do you yeah. know? Do you know why American football? was called football because soccer had been around for yeah, a great long question. time. That's a good Google. I my, don't know. My kids asked me the other day and I was like, I have no idea. They're yeah, like, it, if it, soccer it, was around, why would they still, because Europeans call soccer football, which yes. makes total sense. Yes. They actually spell it differently too. And, but, but then why when American football was created, did they call it football? Yeah. In fact, if you think about it, soccer is more an appropriate name yeah. for American football. Yeah. Because you're getting freaking hammered, like you're getting socked almost. So, yeah, I don't know. Or why don't they just call it battle ball or something like that? I I have no it, idea. Other than the other than the ball or is roughly ball. shaped by, like a foot. I think that's actually why. Are you googling it? A little bit, yeah. Because because now I'm 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 really interested. Yeah. I, when they asked me before, it's when I was like, when dads have sleep on the couch, and I'm like, I don't know. My yeah. my kids, who I love to death, have this uh, weird affinity that I know everything. And 
I'm flattered, but I don't know everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know. Um, like the game itself, the word football has foreign ancestors. Historians trace American football back to two European cousins, soccer and rugby. Both began as kicking games. True. Soccer, the most popular sport in the world. Americans forget that. Soccer is the biggest sport in the world. Well, most Americans think that the world is America. That's true. Was originally known as association football. Newspaper, newspapers seeking a shorter phrase began to refer it as, as ASOC, ASOC which was soon shortened to sock and then grew back into soccer. Interesting. While rugby also began as a football game in 1823, something occurred that changed, uh, changed the kicking game forever. A player named William Webb Ellis, instead of kicking the ball over the goal line, picked it up and ran across. The first observers didn't know what to think. Eventually, they agreed it was a good idea. The game that was played at the rugby school became known as rugby football, later shortened to rugby. Both the soccer style football and rugby style football eventually found their way to America. What resulted was an American combination of the two games. It was, wasn't until much later, 1906, that forward passing was allowed. So because the American game was really just another form of Europe, European football team, football games it too became known as football hmm. okay okay yeah I, I think i was looking for more of a definitive reason <laughs> yeah yeah that's well <laughs> when you're dealing with stuff in like 1906 or 18 yeah. you know early 1800s or like even through the 1800s right yeah i mean some of that is could be urban legend <laughs> at this yeah. point and then you're like okay you know what i i'm following this girl i'm trying to get her on the podcast actually um she she's an expert in Victorian era, so we're talking late eighteen. Is that let late eighteen hundreds, right? Victoria uh, era, Victorian I'm era. Gonna, I'm gonna have to Google that too. I thought it was like throughout the eighteen hundreds. Okay, so let's just say a hundred years of is Victoria era. Um, she's an expert on the medical practices back then. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yeah. So anybody that does not think or anybody that sits there and thinks they have it rough right now okay look i know finances are tough and i know the daily stresses of of our existence are tough but i want you guys to just picture having to go into surgery without anesthetic right. without um proper uh sanitary tools because they didn't believe in germs mm -hmm. like they didn't know about those things they, they didn't, could see them so they didn't, they didn't yeah they were real and so uh, there are some just some horrific <laughs> stories of what these people had to go through um, to fix things. I right. uh, what's this girl's name? Uh, she I'm trying and to get around here just so she could walk us through kind of just God, physical just, surgery while you're while you're looking that up. The Victorian yeah. era is, you know, and this is something I'm almost ashamed I didn't know. Um, the Victorian era uh, is just during Queen Victoria's reign, which was June 20th, 1837 until her death on January 22nd, 1901. OK, so right. kind, kind of the, oh, not quite the mid 1800s and until the early 1900s. Yeah, I'm trying to I got it right now. Her name is uh, Dr. Lindsay Fitzharris. OK, um, cool. if you follow her, she has some gnarly stuff like what happens to your head if syphilis isn't actually, you know, taken oh, care of. that's what Al Capone died of. Was syphilis. Yeah. Or maybe I got that wrong. Maybe it's not syphilis. Maybe this is uh, here's the effects of syphilis on both soft tissue and skeletal structure. It, yeah. it totally destroys you. It destroys I'm gonna, you. I'm going to show like totally destroys oh, you. Gosh, and there's the yeah. skull. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get uh, this girl on and talk about this stuff with her because this stuff is so interesting and scary. So Al Capone died of syphilis. Yeah. They eventually caught they they booked him on oh my god. Yeah. On tax evasion. Then of course that's all you can see yeah. in the untouchables. Right. Um, but they they indicted him on tax evasion, found guilty, and went in prison. When they found out he had syphilis, the guards just let him rot away. Oh, they did. Good. They did not help him at all. Not fun. 
not fun. Oh, that's right. I saved something because I wanted to talk about it on the podcast. That's right. So I saved this. So Dr. Fitz. Here it is. All right. Dr. Fitz Harris. Uh, Dr. Fitz. I'll have to look her up. Yeah. So a reminder of things aren't as bad as they seem today. In the 19th century, a man drove a nail through his penis and then used a hammer to break a bladder stone apart until it was small enough to pass through his urethra. Oh, my God. And she's right here. Just so everybody think about this. Imagine how desperate you would have to be to resort to these measures. Like, it, it had to be so unbearable that that idea actually seemed better than what yeah. you pain wise. Um, wow. So this is called litho tomy is to remove stones would have been done without anesthetic before 1846 the surgeon would have passed a curved metal tube up the patient's penis and into the bladder he then slid a finger into the man's rectum feeling for the stone oh. once he had located it his assistant removed the metal tube and replaced it with a wooden staff which acted as a guide so the surgeon wouldn't fatally rupture the patient's rectum or intestines as he began cutting deep into the bladder. This is all without anesthetic. Yeah. All without anesthetic. Well, and what's weird is that they did have things that could work as anesthetics. They had, yeah. you know, hell, give them some lithium or morphine or something. Opium. Not done, Greg. <laughs> Once the staff was in place, the surgeon cut diagonally through the fibrous muscle to the scrotum until he reached the wooden staff. Next, he used the probe to wind the hole, ripping open the prostate gland in the process. At oh. this point, he removed the wooden staff and used the forceps to extract the stone from the bladder. Here is a beautiful picture. No, it. no, don't just show me. <laughs> that. I don't want to see that. That was for our viewers out there who are uh, YouTube, which, by the way, if you like that little tasty detail, please uh, like and subscribe. Like subscribe. We actually have 90 subscribers already. I shouldn't say already. It's been like we've been here for like, yeah, but um, we're trying to get to 100 here so we can throw a little, uh, I don't know, small little party. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I can find out who the 100th subscriber is, I will give you this. Johnny and the Greg <laughs> sweatshirt, uh, not sweatshirt, Johnny and the Greg hat, winter hat, Win winter's coming. So yeah, um, winter is coming. Yeah. So whoever's the 100th subscriber. I will so, help. since we're on this weird, you know, uh, mutilating yes. surgery topic, have you been watching Doctor Death? Um, no, Peacock? but um, that that's let's talk about it because I have not. But from what you've told me and from what everybody's told me, it is really good. Oh, it it is it is really good. It's fantastic, yeah. and uh, so it, it's it's I believe exclusively on like on Peacock. You got Peacock uh, or Paramount. Um, no, it's on Peacock. Peacock. Uh, it is exclusively on Peacock. I couldn't find it when I tried to Hulu it. But you, you have to, to reading in, I mean, you're watching the show and Joshua Jackson's just doing an excellent job. Um, Dr. Christopher Dutch and Dutch is spelled D U N T C H, which is interesting. Um, it's based on a true story. Like this guy's doing a life sentence right now, uh, for, mutilating his patients in surgery now he seems like he's a a really good research doctor but a terrible surgeon so he's he's going into surgeries and he the what he's doing like all of his staff around him are like um are you doctor are you sure you want to do that and he's just like reading these guys riot act saying i am I mean, just the ego on this guy is amazing um and i don't think it's being overplayed based on what i've read like like joshua jackson isn't isn't overacting saying, oh, the, you know he's not overacting he they're not uh the creators not of the show aren't, yeah yeah they're not they're not making this guy seem worse than he was because of television um in fact what i've read the surgeries this guy did and the people he killed or maimed are they're like downplaying what he did um at one point in the show, he cut out, he's like, he's a, a spinal surgeon. So he's trying to correct just a ruptured disc mm -hmm. and which I, in the show, they make it sound like very standard operating procedure for these doctors. Like they can do millions of these 
you know, not literally with their eyes closed, but you know, they do a lot of them. Um, and here's this doctor. He's like, he pulls out a chunk of something and they're going in through the back of the guy's neck. So trying to fix vertebrae in his neck. He's like, this guy's got a tumor. He's got cancer. There's nothing we do. To close him up. He actually cut out part of the guy's esophagus and left a gaping hole in his esophagus, which can't be repaired. Oh, and you're like, so what <laughs> was this guy? I don't know how far along you're in it, but are they go, is is television? Because here's the problem that I've I think that you're that's why you're doing a lot of research is mm-hmm. television has a way of taking liberties and ex- either making it extreme so you so it's washable, right. and they even um, they even put a disclaimer in the front of the show saying some of these instances are dramatized for television, right? So my question <laughs> to you is: Have they gotten to the part yet where? he's explaining his motives behind it no no i haven't yet. okay okay are but, you getting the idea that the motives are he's just pure evil or he's incompetent or he thinks he sees stuff that's not there or i don't know i mean he's doing surgeries like <clears throat> like he's a cocaine addict i mean that's okay. that's a big part of the show um he needed it to get through college it's one of those things where he tried to he tried to play college football and either he couldn't remember it was two things he couldn't remember the plays like he couldn't remember what his assignment was and what to do and then uh he wasn't big enough he didn't have the size to make up for being a bad player so okay so he so it sounds like there's such an ego involved in here. He doesn't yeah. want to admit he doesn't know what step to take next. Yeah, there's a lot of that. There, there, there's even at the beginning of the show, like the first couple episodes where he's trying to, where he's talking to people, like people are like, doctor, that's not the right move. And he's like, you're the nurse. I am the doctor. You will shut your mouth in my operating room. Kind yeah, that of sounds like ego. Yeah, that sounds yeah, like huge, you know. huge ego. Yeah, um, he in the show, and I haven't read this in any of the real life accounts, but he uh, quote unquote falls in love with a stripper uh, and has a son by her. Well, who doesn't? You know? But he never had. Um, but then he's uh, there's a point in the show, and I'm sure this was for drama's sake, where he's like, "Why why don't you go to college? Why don't you become?" a nurse or become a doctor. He's like, you're smart enough. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, what's wrong with me the way I am? Like, he's embarrassed that she was a stripper. Oh, and he's like, she's like, I don't do that anymore. I'm with a doctor. And so he was just living the high life. But the real guy is currently in prison. I mean, this is part of the show. He's currently in prison. Um, The question that persists in the show is is he just a really bad surgeon like he doesn't get it like he really doesn't know what to do or is this sadistic Mm. and i mean he's got a best friend um who's kind of the guy that introduced him to drugs uh but they eventually through his research as a doctor and this guy's money from drug dealing back this clinic but his friend has a neck issue and he's like okay you're gonna fix my neck Finally, they get around to it. He, he turns this guy into quadriplegic. Spoiler alert. Well, this is this is the true story. Like, you can yeah, go yeah. research this. But then he disappears. He's like, where's my friend? Where's my doctor? They're like, we can't find him. <laughs> oh, wow. So it is just ridiculous. And where I am at in the show, and they released it all at once. You can go what do you mean he disappears? Thing. What do you mean he disappears? Like, he just... He goes to a different hospital now and new name. Well, new... Partially. Yeah. Partially, partially part of the show is him hopping hospitals. Cause he'll do, he'll like, he'll go to a hospital with a clean record and that he's like the Texas board of health has never sanctioned him done anything because before they can, he leaves a hospital and goes to a new one. Oh, and, um, and then he'll, he does, I don't know, a dozen surgeries botches most of them. And then he goes to another one. So it's kind of weird in that respect. But he's also doing what seems like groundbreaking stem cell research for, for like spinal issues. Uh, so that's why, 
Which is why, well, no, he is. Which oh. is why all these doctors want him on their staff. Because when he finally makes these giant breakthroughs, it gets accredited to the hospital that he's at. Ah, uh, so funding. So like, yeah, money, like money, 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 money. Yep, and a lot of people turning blind eyes and things like that, and you're like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's that's, um, yeah. Speaking of spoilers, we, I guess you could say we bought Jungle Cruise last night. Did you really? We did. We did. I gave Ursula the, um, I said, let's do a family movie night, you know, and she's like, I don't want to leave. I go, cool. Let's go on Disney plus. There's two movies that you haven't seen. You haven't seen black widow. You and I haven't seen jungle cruise. Mm -hmm. We play the trailers. We got Gwen's vote. We got Ursula's vote and I didn't vote. And, um, you're the dad. You don't get, yeah, she voted. Uh, I didn't want to, she voted, um, jungle cruise. Because she thought for some reason my three-year-old daughter who has yet to sit down and fully watch an adult movie, except <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, sorry. She, she, for some reason, she will sit down and never move from that when that's yeah, on. It's bright colors and change. Yeah. yeah. Moving, but she's never watched anything live action. Like, okay. it always has to be animated for her uh-huh. to sit down. So anyway, she picked that. And um, God damn it, Greg, The Rock got me again. Like... Did you like it? No. No. Okay. I'm sorry. It's not that I like I I didn't hate it, but <laughs> I walked out going, okay. Like he does this all the time. It's it, he, and I he, don't yeah. get him. Like I don't get how this guy continues to <laughs> be like the A-list. And that's why I'm scared to death about Black Adam because I think uh-huh. it's just it's just going to be eh. Oh cool, we saw the rock fly now. Cool, we saw The Rock beat up whatever's whoever's playing Superman or whatever. However, they're gonna spin the however they're gonna spin Black Adam. Anyway, this isn't about Black Adam, it's about Jungle Cruise. Okay, I'll tell you this right off the bat, guys. I wonder if I would have gotten a different feeling watching it in the theater. That's I, I just wonder that Why? because I I feel I'm getting it, it feels like I was so far removed from theaters, and then finally when I got a taste of it again, it seemed better. It seemed bigger. It seemed, like you said, an event, an experience. Here it just seemed like I was watching a Sunday night movie on USA. Okay. Okay. Um, Emily Blunt's awesome. They tried to do The Mummy with Brandon Fraser, that one. They tried to do the mummy meets Pirates of the Caribbean meets Indiana Jones. Okay. Yeah. And but did they pull it off? <laughs> no. I, I don't think they did. Uh according to uh all the critics, it was outstanding. According to the audience, it was amazing. So they're making a sequel. It's happening. Well, that's just about money. <laughs> um he all but they were trying to use this. I think here's the problem we always step into, or I'm noticing a pattern when people have this idea of, they want to continue a franchise. Like, I don't think they made Raiders of the Lost Ark thinking there'd be two more after it. No, I don't think so. I don't think when they, I think maybe star Wars was the only one that was like, you yeah, know, I have, I have more stories in, in store for this. I, mm-hmm. but I, I, I think when you start, Hey, I'm so excited about this. Like when they made Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't think they were thinking of making a part two. You know what I'm saying? Making it a franchise like this. And I think that was the game plan with this. And again, it's, it's C plus B minus work. And we knew it. I knew it. We talked about it. Yeah. Like I knew it. I knew it was coming. And yet I was excited when we press played and I was like, all right, here we go. Jungle cruise. And Jesus, like, okay, I, we're we're gonna go ask. through. I, well, we're gonna go through his filmography here because I think he's he's really got, in my opinion, more movies where I'm like, eh, than yeah. he does of things that I actually like. And now he's, right. you know, it's IMDb that I'm looking at. So they're giving okay. him uh, acting credits and anything he appeared in. So the first, I mean, Jungle Cruise is his most recent. <laughs> 
Um, but then he's got Young Rock, the TV series. He's he's in it, but it's more like an no. Don't type don't, show. don't do that. don't do don't do like the like those shows. Just do those actual shows. movies that have gone into the theater and start from Jungle Cruise down. Okay, so Jungle Cruise. After that, we've got Jumanji: The Next Level. I, I watched that this weekend too. That was so boring. That was a terrible film. Yeah, I wasn't. En- I didn't enjoy that at I, all. I found them completely annoying. Yes. Yes. On so many levels, the the return to even those the kids the the from yes. his first Jumanji yes. film. Yes. I didn't Actually, care about any of them. No, I didn't care about it either. The only one that I just I really enjoy her is the girl that plays Nebula. She's cool. Right. I mean, that actress is cool. Yes. But like the characters. Of course. Yeah. Of like they moved out like from the first film, they moved on. They're in college. Two of the characters were dating for a while. I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't care about what their future held at all. Neither so did I. so Neither that did was I. A, a bummer. Um, For films after that, we've got Fast and the Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. Nah. Yeah. I watched it on a plane. Mm-hmm. I'm happy I watched it on a plane because yeah. it was entertaining for about that long. Yeah. Um, I didn't come off the plane going, wow, that's a great movie. No, it wasn't. Yep. Nope. Uh, fighting with my family. He was in, but not really. I mean, he wasn't the, the so stunts. that was probably decent because he probably played himself. He did. He totally played himself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was 2019, yeah. uh, 2018 skyscraper. We talked. I about actually that. liked it, but I understand how it's meh. No, I, I, I get, I, I wouldn't say I liked it. Was I entertained by it? I sat through the whole movie, and it, and when it was done, it was just one of those things where I'm like, well, I've added to my cultural consciousness. Oh, here, here, let's break this down. Okay, so like it, okay? <laughs> like it is a is a um, vague term because, mm-hmm. so we have to break it down to this. Greg, would you agree that we should put love it as in if it's on the TV, we'll stop and keep it on while we're doing dishes or while we're folding laundry? Like that's a movie or a movie that you don't mind seeing again, right? Okay. Yeah. But let's put it in a star system. So five, one, two, three, four, five. Five stars okay. would be like your love it. Yeah. You'll watch it. You'll sit down and actually watch it again. Yes. Four is you liked it, you know. Maybe maybe it's your laundry folding film. Three is you watched it once. You're not going to go back to it again. Okay. And I think one or two are like, no, I'm never going to watch it again. One yeah. one is like you hated it. Like you, you know, like you're mad you spent time on it. Yeah. Yeah. Two two is yeah. You didn't like it. You're not going to watch it again. Right. Yeah. Let's try yeah. there. Okay. All right. So then Jungle Cruise is definitely a three. Every movie you've named so far, I have not seen that one with wrestling with the family or keep it in the family. No, whatever that was either. So everyone you've mentioned so far is a three to me. I will uh, never watch Skyscraper again, but I didn't walk away thinking it was bad. For me, that was a two. Like, okay. like if it's on TV, I'm, yeah. I'm finding something else. Okay. Not going to watch it again. After that is Rampage. I actually, mm, for me, I it's didn't a, mind it. I didn't mind it. For but me, I didn't it's a go in three. Thinking, yeah, I didn't go in thinking, oh my God, it's going to blow away. No, I thought it was going to be terrible, but I took yeah. my son because he was, you know, at the age where he just yeah. really wanted to see giant monsters fighting stuff. Yeah. And, and and you know what? I'm right there with him. Yeah. Um, But it's a three. If it's on TV and I've got nothing better to watch, like, and, and yeah. I fold the laundry or something, I'll have it on. All right. Um, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, the first one. That, that was good. I that's like a solid that. four for me. I like, yes. A, a I four because of the ensemble cast. Yes. Like. They all did good. They all made fun of each other in the right way. Uh-huh. You know, I liked it. Uh, from that, we're going to 2017 Baywatch. Two. Nope. Two. That's a two. Uh, his first Fast I'm sorry, Greg, Greg. You know what? I'm sorry. That was a one. That was that was a horrendous. Yeah, you movie. know what? It you was know? after we got done watching that. I'm like, what the fuck did we just watch? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, why the fuck are you carrying refrigerators on a test of so like, so stupid? So much wasted talent. Yes, in that absolutely. Film. Dwayne Horrible. Johnson, I believe, is more talented than that, and I know Zach Efron is more talented. Than right. That. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, Fast and the Furious. 
uh, the, or I'm sorry, the fate of the furious. Um, okay. I okay. know that one, but uh, that was, that was, that was a three. That That's something I will watch while I'm folding laundry. Just to just, just have it on. Actually. I actually won't watch it. I'll just listen to it in the background as I'm moving around the house. Yeah. Most of those are two for me. Now yes. I'll, I'll find something else. Uh, 2016 Moana. I like Moana. Te- technically, yeah, I do too. Yeah, that's, that would probably be a five, I think. Oh, yeah, I, I, I loved yeah. it. I loved Moana. Yep, I'd be there. Central Intelligence, the Kevin Hart movie where he's no. a CIA agent. God, that was awful. Yep, another awful one. That's a two. But yeah, actually, let me ask you a question. Let me stop here because he says that Kevin Hart and him, they people claim they have great chemistry. Have you seen it? I haven't. Like, I don't see chemistry there. No, not, not what I would consider. Right. Okay, go ahead. I mean, going back to the beginning of his career, he, uh, The Rock and Sean William Scott had better chemistry. Yes, yes. Than him and Kevin Hart. Yes. For sure. Yeah, yes. Um, San Andreas. No. The Earthquake movie. Yeah, still, still not a fan of that one. But Carla Gugino's in that one, which I'll watch it. Yeah. Um, Fury Seven. Back to where he's. I think that was the introduction of his character. No, no, that was Fast Five, where he's hunting down Dom. God, did really that many yes, ago? Yes, yes. Um, that was actually that was the best Fast movie for me. Was Fast Five. That's the one where they're they in Brazil and they're and at the end of it they're driving around with those vaults. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I, I, they the all one. they all gel together for me in a big lump of not caring. Yeah. So, um, down to 2014 Hercules. No, nope. I had a lot of hopes nope. for that one. Who didn't? You know what really got me with that film is and what what really moved it from a three, uh, probably down to a one is when you find out that he's not. He's not a demigod. It's he's not Hercules. He's just a strong dude capitalizing on those names and legends. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, he doesn't really have super strength. Well, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, remind me of that twist. Because that's a twist in a movie. That's a twist that you're like, well, what? No. In in the previews, they show him doing like the deeds of Hercules, like yes. fighting the Nimian yeah. lion and yeah. doing all these super heroic kind of things. And then in the actual film, you find out that he's got like more or less a bard with him who's just exaggerating all these tales or just flat out making them up. And that he's actually part of this troop of kind of bandits. It almost turns into Hercules where they're like thieves and con artists. Yeah. See what and I'm saying? He's, like and that's, he's that's the that's strong a, dude of that. But, that. but that's leading you down the path where you're like, wait a minute, this isn't. This is what it's about. Like that's so. Keep going after yeah. Hercules. Uh, after Hercules uh, is Fast Six. Okay, all all of the Fast Six movies or all of the Fast and Furious movies are going to be twos for me. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we got Pain and Gain, which I actually really like. Pain and he Gain. Wasn't, it wasn't really him. It wasn't. No, it was. It was. Yeah. He. I liked his character, but really, that was the ensemble of Anthony Mackie. Mark Wahlberg right. and Dwayne Johnson in this yeah. absolutely ridiculous. For me, it was more like the writing and directing them. You could have had other people in those roles yeah. Yeah. and I still would have laughed just as hard. Yeah. Um, what I like about that film is like during the climax of the film, they actually stop, put a disclaimer on the screen that says, keep in mind, all of this is what really happened. Like, yeah. Yeah, I know. As ridiculous as this is getting, this is what these idiots really did. Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed that one. Um, Empire State, I never saw. I did. <laughs> no. No? Okay. No. Uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation. No. Again, that's a two. <laughs> okay, can we just agree looking down that line? It's probably oh, yeah, the it is. He's got some movies I've never even heard of. Snitch? I don't even know what that is. Oh, actually. No, Snitch was, no. There was one movie that was kind of cool. It was the one where he's dr- drive, or he's a he's a convict that comes out of jail. He's going after somebody, and Billy Bob Thornton's chasing him. Billy Bob Thornton? 
just name the movies going down. Okay. Uh, we had Snitch, the uh, Fast Five, Faster. Where That's it. That's it. His name is Driver. Yes. He's just this pissed off guy that comes out of prison and starts killing people that like wronged him. Oh. It wasn't bad because you were kind of thinking like, what? Like he was like a force of nature in that movie. He didn't say a lot of lines and really? it, it's just an interest. It was an interesting movie. So it's I, that that's a three to me. But basically Moana and the rundown. That's it, man. Well, even just going through here, like the other guys, the tooth fairy, which is where yes, I we're know. getting in. Uh, he, he's not even giant. Giant no, Rocky. No, he's not. Excuse me. He's uh, because that's one. He's play a quarterback in that one. Yeah, yeah. That was originally intended for Arnold Schwarzenegger years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, race to Witch Mountain. No. Get Smart. No. Uh, oh gosh. Doom. That was terrible. Doom was horrendous. Be that's cool. It. He's in, but. No. Again, that's yeah. that's not his movie. That's another movie. That's right. that's uh Danny DeVito and John Travolta and yeah. Rene Russo. It's, it's the rundown in Moana. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's why I'm going through this. Oh, he was in an episode of Voyager. Who knew? I mean, the, after that, you're still into like the he's, yes. he's I mean he's he, he's a wrestler showing up and stuff. Yes, he does do some he that HBO show where he's a sports agent is a yes. really good show. That's Ballers a very was good great. Show. Yes. Baller, Baller was great. Um but it not because it completely rested on him. Uh, no. Uh what's his name? Um Oh. He he plays one of the football players. Um he's he was in Tenant. He's the son of Denzel Washington. Isaiah Washington. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, um John David Washington. Oh John David Washington, yeah. yeah. Uh He's he's phenomenal in that series. In fact, he is consistently phenomenal in that series. The Rock had his ups and downs as far as his performance went, um, but Washington was phenomenal. Yeah. So what? Well, look. So that's what that's the Rock's past. What we've got coming up? Um, it's going to move called Red Notice coming out. First which, off, let's pause there. Red Notice. The he has me already. I'm I. It's Ryan Reynolds, Gail Gadot, and him. And mm-hmm. that seems, God, the potential's there. Just like the yeah. potential's been there for half of his movies. Yep. And you just always walk out going, man, I, I kind of, I kind of expected more. Yeah. You know, that's how you always walk out of these movies. And I don't know how this guy. Not, he's huge. Well, well, for one, it's not he's, that he's huge. Come on, it's not. Well, so is John Cena. John Cena is huge, but he hasn't made a lot of good movies. The Rock has a certain level of charisma. You go back to his that first, is absolutely true. You go back to his first Saturday Night Live appearance. Things it was a it was a Christmas episode. Uh during his opening monologue, he sings, and like we didn't know that he was he was a wrestler at that point. No, and then I mean, and then the, he yeah, had I'm, two other wrestlers come on, and we're like, "Holy crap, he's singing like really kind of well, mm-hmm. like not." A, so it, it's that level of charisma that he's been able to spin and spin and spin and spin and make mediocre movies and, and still be a star. Yeah, and everybody loves him. They love his work ethic. He shows, from what I understand, he shows up on the set with in an incredible mood, ready uh-huh. to go, and. I just, um, I just, he gets me every time. He's going to continuously get me because I am going to yeah. watch Red Notice. I am going to watch Black Adam. Yep. I lo- that's what I was going to say. Looking at the films that he's got coming up, Red Notice, going to see it. Black Adam, it's a DC film. Of course, I'm going to see it. Uh, next up is DC League of Super Pets. It's an animated thing. Oh. Um, still going to see it. It's him and Kevin Hart doing voices, but voices. Going to see it. San Andreas 2? No. Oh my I, god, I can't believe that made... Uh, they're making a sequel to that? They're making a sequel to that, but here's the thing, John. I'm not... I might not see it in the theater, but that's gonna hit HBO Max. Fuck, I'll probably watch it. I don't think I will. But anyway, I mean, that's... 
it's not gonna be a right away watch, but at yeah. some at some at point, some point you're gonna pop curiosity <laughs> is gonna get the best of me. on a Saturday when the kids are gone, everybody's gone and you got nothing. To oh do. no, no, it's gonna be on some day when I'm I'm still working and yeah. I've got a shit ton of like data entry and no oh, no meetings okay. and no one's gonna bother me, and that's gonna be on one screen while I'm working on another one. Oh, okay, just, okay. And the only time I'm going to turn and look is when Carlo Gugino's on the screen. That's just going to be my, that's, that's your thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, after that, he's got one called the King. It's about King Kamehameha, who was one of the first Kings of Hawaii. Yeah. Whatever. I, I just, I, I don't historically, I want to historically, see. maybe, I don't know. I, okay. King, King, I haven't seen him act. I'm sorry. Well, let me rephrase that. He's not an actor to me. Like, if Correct. you told me it was some other, like, if it was Daniel Day-Lewis playing that king, okay, you're in for some heavy shit coming up. I just don't think this guy has acting chops. I think he's, you and I have discussed this multiple times about him. He's not an actor. He's a movie star. Right. You go to watch The Rock race cars with Vin Diesel. You go to watch The Rock, I guess you watch him go down the Amazon River with Emily Blunt. Like, he got me again. I knew he'd get me in the middle of it. I'm like, son of a bitch. He got me like right. <sighs> the, rock. well, here's, and I actually like him. I really do. I like him. And I, one of the movies he was in called Southland tales. I never saw it. Um, it was a 2006 film. That was a trippy one. I, right. It was trippy. Um, other than that, more, yeah, even Gridiron Gang. All of his other projects that he's done have been based around his physicality. Yes. Like him being big, even just big and charismatic. They, they, they've That's been the base of mm -hmm. all of it. Yeah. Possibly with this King Kamehameha is where his physicality can't be the focus. Because it's, it's, and it's hard. It should be a political drama. And I think that's where he's going to have to either come through as an actor or the movie's going to fail. Well, I shouldn't say the movie's going to fail. Everybody's going to go see it because it's The Rock. Like, the guys, every movie studio notes that he is a, he's an opportunity to just print money. Yep. Yeah. But the um, critics but, are going to either love it or hate it. Yeah, but this is what's interesting about him, okay, is – he's the only one that can do this. Schwarzenegger couldn't get away with doing this. And even in the eighties coming out with shitty movies in the eighties in the, okay. If you were to look back at most of Arnold's movies now, yes, you could sit there and pick them apart and call them shitty commando. But back in the eighties, when commando first came out, right. That was a blockbuster. You couldn't yep. tell anybody anything. Any, you couldn't tell anybody it was a bad movie. It's, it's funny you say that. I was just watching this. HBO Max has this documentary that was put up by CNN called uh, The Movies. And it's just like decades at a time. And I just was in the middle of watching the 80s before we came out. And even Ar they were talking about Arnold and Sly in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and how Sylvester Stallone started out as like an actor. Like the man's got Oscars for writing movies. I mean, Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Looking at First Blood. And how that was more of a drama. It uh -huh. wasn't about him being this, nope. you know, ripped up killing machine. And Rambo 2, throw, they took that dramatic formula and completely threw it out the window. Yes. <laughs> and, and came out America the ate it up. Yep. And they have an interview with Arnold saying, I make a certain type of movie. And you can't put Dustin Hoffman in my role and expect it to work. Yeah. And that's kind of where The Rock is right now. Mm. Oh, okay. I think I know what you're saying. So, if you were to take a young, let me th if you were to take Chris Pine and put him in the role of the Rock in Jungle Cruise, would it would it be considered a bad movie? That's what I'm wondering. See, what if? Yeah, Chris Pine's actually a good choice because I could see from what I've seen in the previews. Yeah, he could pull that off. Nathan Filia could pull that off. Yes. Yeah. Probably more believably than The Rock. 
Oh, okay, look, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a spoiler here that I'm going to tell Greg. Greg, do you mind if I tell you this or no? No, I don't care. Okay, okay. So here's a spoiler for Jungle Cruise. So if you do not want to hear it, okay, uh, turn it down or turn it off. But it's kind of a big deal. And it, so here it comes in three, two, one. Okay, Greg, in this movie, halfway through it, he gets stabbed in the heart and he falls and he makes a whore horrendous fall. You're like, oh, shit, they killed him off. It's not that he's super. Actually, it is. He's superhuman. He's he's like a 400 year old conquistador that's been trapped in the Amazon. And that comes out of nowhere. You go, what? Where did they come up with that? Exactly. Well, I mean, the oh, he found the fountain of youth. Is that it? No, no, no. The beginning of it is this the hunt for this tree, right? And these petals can these petals can cure you of any sickness, can give you immortality, and they can cure any curse or something still like that. Right? Youth, yeah. Whatever. Yes, it's it but in this case it's a tree. So he's part of the original group, the con the conquistadors Conquist. that actually actually find it. And they were they were like on death's door nail. They the 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 village people that are protecting this tree end up reviving them and you know the conquistadors go to kill him go to kill him and they become cursed so it's very pirate pirates of the caribbean they become okay. cursed they're like one with the jungle except all of his other friends look like davy jones like if you can Got imagine it. a guy made of snakes i've heard that there was some bees, pretty a guy made of yeah. roots some you know pretty and big, he's uh... Pirates of the Caribbean feels to this one. Yeah. Yeah. And which is fine. I love the first one. I thought sure. the first Pirates of the Caribbean was fantastic. And each one got worse. But uh, like this comes out of nowhere and you go, so he's he's immortal? Like none of this matters? Like what? Huh. You know, you just find yourself not understand. Like it's like did you guys think of this last second because you killed them off and you didn't know how to bring them back? Like, what's going on here? You know, it was very, it was very poorly placed in. Mm. It just, it, I didn't, I well, didn't like that. I'll tell you what, the, the next two movies of his, which are on IMDb, they just say announced. Like Red Notice, Black Adam, those are in post production. Uh, Super Pets is filming. The King is in Pearl's production. Uh, his last three movies are just the studios have announced we're going to make them, which means they could still die in the vine, but probably not. Um, so we got San Andreas 2. The next two, if he screws these up, uh, I may write him off. Uh, one is Doc Savage, which Doc Savage is an old uh, I know. Pulp, pulp novel here. I'm, I'm a fan of Doc Savage. Doc Savage, Man of Bronze. Uh, one of the first uh like blacks, not superheroes, but action heroes in pulp or even mm -hmm. in liter in mm -hmm. literary terms. I mean, yeah. came out in the you know twenties pulp novel Doc Savage, and they kept they always said man of bronze, but they allude to the fact that he's a man of color, um, kind of a a precursor to Batman in, in a way with his intelligence and gadgets and stuff. Uh, and then, and I don't know how they're going to do this because it's not a reboot; it's a sequel. To Big Trouble in Little China. God, I'll be there. Son of a bitch. Oh, no. I'm going to be, like I said, I'll, I'm there for all of them, but if he screws them up. <sighs> yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, it's enough Dwayne the Rock Johnson bashing. I just, <laughs> I, I walked away, I walked away disappointed. I walked away disappointed. And like, I walked away going, it's all right. So, Jungle Cruise to me, guys, is a, it's a two. Like, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to put... I, okay, we bought it on Disney+. Plus. Okay? So, we have that now forever. Like, we we can watch it anytime we want. I will never watch that again. <laughs> never. And so, I was telling Ursula, like, the part... I, I wanted Black Widow because I wanted to watch it again. And if I have it, I will watch it over and over and over again. Because I liked it. I enjoyed it. So... Mm -hmm. This one will never, this one will never play. Unless somebody comes to my house and they go, oh, I mean, I haven't seen that. Have fun. I'm going to go mow the lawn or something. <laughs> <laughs> I won't watch that again.
But anyway, um, so uh, speaking of acting, I we watched finally for the first time Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We watched a ton of movies this week. Oh, good. This weekend. Um, that was a movie that, God, you know what? He, Quentin Tarantino, he has such unique movies in terms of, I can't call this movie bad, but nothing seemed to fucking happen for the longest time. <laughs> And then everything happened. And then it went completely alternate history, which I actually appreciated this time. Yeah. Because I thought they were going to show the, you know, the Sharon Tate murder. And I was going to be upset about that because mm-hmm. I, I, that, look, murders happen every day. But for some reason, that one gets to me. It's like if I could go back in time, I would try and stop that one. I don't know why. Um, But that's just one of those. Hey. What about you? Is there any, if you have a time machine and you have the ability to go back in time and stop something like a, like a murder like that, or just say like, you know, I don't know that just that one crawl, that one gets in my crawl so fast. Really? Yeah. That I don't know why. uh, Not like there, it's the only one. And there's other ones I would love to stop anything with a child. I'd love to. Yeah. I mean, that that was my hunt them down, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think. But anyway, moving on. I'm sorry. I don't mean yeah. to throw that at you. Um, but there's a part in there, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where um, Leonardo DiCaprio is playing this character, and he keeps calling for lines. He goes into his lot, and he goes into... Have you seen this movie? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember how he goes in the trailer, and he just destroys himself, like yelling at himself, and mm-hmm. you better fuck out, I'll grab a gun, and I'll fucking shoot you in the face if you blow your lines. You know, he's like going off on himself. And Ursula and I are watching this, and we look at each other, and we go, I wonder if some actors are doing this in their, like, in their cabin. I wonder if they're that manic about it. Like, they just get in there, and they just go so crazy. So nuts. Yeah. What did you think about that? Uh, I think yes. I think that happens because throughout that like film, Bale, you think Christian Bale's one of those guys? No, no. I He's probably pissed so. off at everybody else for fucking up their lives. Correct. Yeah, that that, that would be my thing. <laughs> yeah. And I, I've got a second part to this, but yeah, I think because. <laughs> Uh, I think was it Rick Dalton was his name in the film. Yes. yes. Is like, he's a mediocre actor. Like, yeah. like that's kind of the thing. Like he's having trouble getting good parts. Right. And he can't screw up, but he keeps flubbing his lines. Yes. And so, yeah, he's mad about that. And so I think there are some actors like that, that just keep blowing lines. And then, cause I mean, you, you've been around some actors. I've been around some actors. Um, <laughs> some of them have, mental issues like even just self-image issues where they're yes. just like, you suck i mean because they yeah don't, that's like, true. they can't live up to their own expectations hype. yeah um or their own hype yeah yeah so i think that's true um there is what what was i i was watching something about they were asking an actor do you have trouble do you have trouble remembering your lines and he said no, not really, because you know you get the script. Oh, it, it was it was um, it was Matthew McConaughey in his okay. book. Uh, in his book, they were talking to him about you know remembering lines, and he, and he, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, and he's like, no, because you know you get the script and you read it over again, and then you read it again at the table read, and then you read it again. He's like, you just read and read and read and read and read so many times that. By the time you get to the stage, by the time you, I mean, and then you've got rehearsals and all this other stuff. By the time that they say action and the camera's rolling, the words are just like, you know, the the lines of the words themselves are like second nature because you've, you've read them so many times, you've said them so many times, but now what is, what it's become is like, how would your, how would your character say these lines? He's like, that's really what you're searching for is the soul of the character in that scene, in that moment. So the lines just become whatever. Yeah. And, talk and, about an actor that went one way real quick. Like there was a long time. He went through a stage where he was doing stupid shit all the time, like dumb movies. And then all of a sudden, yeah, like he had like three or four romance comedies right off the bat that were like oh, stupid. Oh, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. He, and, and he all really... of a sudden, Oscar, Oscar, boom. Yep. 
And he's and just... he talks about that. He talks he the movies he passed on because they were another romantic comedy. They were formulaic. Yeah. And and how he had the voice of his dad in the back of his head where when he told his dad he wanted to step away from being a lawyer yeah, to being an actor. And his dad's like, well, don't half-ass it, son. Yeah. And that's always his thing if I can't half-ass this. Yeah. And he, he got to the point where doing romantic comedies, he's like, I'm phoning it in. Like, this is half-ass and I need to do something else. And so he started to take risks as an actor yeah. and he did yeah. movies like Mud and he did one where he's an assassin. Um, and they didn't hit at all but critically he was getting more accolades even though the yeah. movies were flops right and then he did uh dallas buyers club and then just right. went off the charts yeah so i like him i like him a lot me too yeah. i think even of uh when he was promoting his book you uh he seems like a soulful guy he does you know i mean like the, those people that are real i guess you would really call him a salt of the earth guy like he doesn't take himself too seriously right he understands you get the idea that he, oh man, he understands what life is about. And when like, I had, when he was doing all Jason romantic Stan. comedies, I had like a image of him and I was totally wrong. I mean, totally wrong about, oh, yeah. a, about what he's actually like. Yeah, I know. I know. And then you actually, I remember him getting arrested, being naked, playing the bongos somewhere. Right. Yeah. I remember that. I remember thinking, yeah, that fit the stereotype that I thought of, mm-hmm. you know, but he but goes then, into that and he's like, yeah. It, it, it really that entire situation is the the they're making a big deal about it being Matthew McConaughey, yeah. and and if it was anybody else, they just leave him alone. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, we going back to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again. I I don't know what to think of that movie because it just kind of went on forever, and then all of a sudden it ended. And there was a part where I thought there was twice I thought Brad Pitt was going to die. Uh huh. And um, I'm just watching this. Did you get the idea, like, when he was out in that kind of desert yep, commune? Yep, farm. Yep. Did, did you get, did you know that that was the Manson family? Yes, I family? did. Okay. I knew it, they were the Manson girls when they were picking themselves in the trash can, where they were, like, picking in the trash. Yeah. That's, like, right in the beginning of the movie, and the, the girls that were hitchhiking. And Ursula goes, how do you know that? And I said, you know what? I, I really don't know how I knew that <laughs> I just got this icky bad yeah. feeling about these girls. Um, so kudos to them because I had, I didn't even know that Manson was actually in it until I saw who was playing Sharon Tate. And I was like, Oh shit, Sharon Tate's in here. Oh, this is mm-hmm. around 79. Oh shit. This is, you know, I started connecting the dots. Right. So, but yeah, that was a unique movie. We also watched blood red sky, that vampire in the plane movie. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was okay. That was um, that wasn't bad, especially for a German film. No, on our rating scale, that's a four for me. Oh, you like that one? I did. Yeah. yeah. It, it, prob- for yeah. me, it's tough to find creative vampire stories now. Yes, that was um, definitely creative. Yeah, and I thought that that was a fun take on vampires that were almost like the Thirty Days a Night vampires. Yeah, but they still had a little bit more mentality about them. Yeah. Like consciousness. You know what's kind of cool about watching a werewolf movie or a vampire movie? And I just thought of this right now. You, while you're watching it, you figure out the rules for that movie in terms Correct. of that vampire. Okay. Yeah. When you get bit, it's, I remember, wasn't it always you have to get bit three times? Wasn't that the old legend? And now it's like a virus where you get bit, you're automatically a zombie within like five minutes. Well, it's interesting you say this because I'm actually, and when I say reading, I'm doing it on Audible, which if you want a free trial of Audible, go to audibletrial.com slash J-A-T-G and get one month on Johnny and the Greg. Um, So I'm I'm listening to that because I've never actually read the original novel, Bram Stoker's original novel. Okay, okay. I never, um, I could never get through it, honestly. I'd read the first couple pages, and because it's kind of that Victorian area English, I was having, I was struggling. Um, So I was fully dramatized with a great cast, and so I'm listening to it. And it's weird because these are like, like this is the first vampire novel. Right. Um, 
Now, a lot of people say there's another one about uh, Bloody Mary uh, that comes later, um, where that we get a lot of our other pieces to it. But uh, it, in this one, it's not. It, it's some. It somehow has to do with still ingesting cursed blood, so like the blood of a vampire. Right. Um, and Lucy has just been turned in the book and they find out that she's taking children in the night but she's still not like full vampire because none of the children have died yet okay like she's feeding on them but she's not killing them okay um so i'm at the part of the book where he van helsing has brought dr stewart arthur and oh one of the other guys the american um they they've witnessed Lucy rising from the dead, her turning into mist to go back in her coffin to say, okay, we need to come back during the daytime and we're going to kill her. Um, so that's where I'm at. But yeah, the, the, what I, what I found enormously interesting is that every vampire film, Dracula has some sort of like humanity for doing what he does. Like he's like the big one I remember is in, uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula film with Gary Oldman. Oh, okay. And, and Keanu Reeves and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, kind of the most recent adaptation of the novel. They treat Dracula like he's a victim. Kind of like he was yeah. just trying to protect his people. And that's how he became a vampire. And that Mina Harker is actually the reincarnation of his wife. And so mm-hmm. it's just his search for love. All of that is bullshit. <laughs> in, oh, yeah? the no- in the novel, Dracula is just a, a blood feasting horrible demon. monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I found that to be interesting. But you're actually right about the rules. I mean, going through Thirty Days a Night, going through Lost yeah. Boys, going through um, I'm trying to think of other vampire films, Fright Night. Um, yeah, what are the rules to changing? What are the rules? You know, yeah. I just I just showed the kids. Uh, uh, my best friend's a vampire. Like it's a nineteen. Oh yeah, with Jim Carrey. 19... Right? No, no, that's no. once bitten, which is okay. also still in the same vein of like a PG thirteen ish yeah. vampire film uh, from the early nineties. And yeah, the rules even in there are totally off. They're like crosses. Yeah, they don't actually mean anything. We're yeah. back in this original novel. No, yeah, crosses meant something. Yeah. Yeah, I. Yeah, th- those are fun between werewolves and um, vampires. I the part of the movie I enjoy is what are the yeah, what are the, the rules? How I strong is a vampire? Are they strong? Are they not strong? Do they have humanity? Do they not? Are they right. fighting it? Do they not fight it? I also like like in the trailer of Morbius, the one that's coming out with Jared Leto, right. showing his powers are kind of cool. How everything's echo, echo uh, location. Yeah. Yes. Well, and what's going to be interesting about that, I mean, Morbius as a character, he's not um, a vampire, right? He's a living. He's not a supernatural based right, vampire. Right. It, it is. He comes up with a cure for his disease, which is like eating away at his body. And part of it is like a vampire bat DNA meld. Yeah. And that's what makes him, you know, the living vampire Morbius. So. Right. Well, see. Hey, let me ask you a question because I don't know if this is true or not. I remember watching the most information I ever got from Morbius was on the Spider-Man animated TV show in the 90. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the in the comics, he didn't have suction no. stuff on his hands. That was just to make it pretty that, and nice for for kids, for, right? for Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, That's what I, I thought. He's, okay. All right. He is a fanged, rip your throat yes. out kind of animal. Okay, all right, cool, all right, cool. Because I and thought the lo- that was a like the little part. glance you get at him in the movie trailer is actually pretty accurate to what yes, he's I've in seen the I've seen comic book versions of him. I just never saw the, uh, uh, I just never read a comic. With maybe because you're coming up here uh, in a couple days. Yeah, maybe on Friday night we should rent werewolf within it's a black it's a dark comedy with werewolves is that the one where with the with the black cop who's yeah the black cop and the 18t girl 
Okay, you've seen it? No, but okay, I want to yeah, watch it. And I keep putting it. it off, but I yes. think we should do that when you're on. We should it. definitely do it. We should definitely do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, guys, I'm uh we're we're driving up to Greg's. We got a kind of a I guess I don't want to say a guys' night, but it's a dad's night, I feel. We're doing a date. Yeah. We're we're gonna go <laughs> Friday, we're gonna go to Coco's. We yeah. had uh Chef Chris on here before. We're gonna go to Coco's and just Kick back, relax. Keep, uh, keep an eye out for a, at least a um, not a knee jerk reaction because we're not going to do that, but a, a little live. You know, we'll we'll go live for a little bit when we're at yeah, live tasting. Maybe, maybe yeah. a little live tasting, and then after that, we are definitely giving you a knee jerk reaction because the next day is we're going to go see Suicide Squad, which I hear yep, it's the best DC movie out there. Yeah, I. So, so we had Matt last week really, really kind of convinced me. He's like, are you sure? Cause I was going to skip it. I was going to yeah. skip it. I, w- I didn't care for it. Cause the first one was so bad. Yeah. And he's like, are you sure you want to do that? Cause th- one, this is James Gunn. I said, yeah, but it's still going to suck. It's still a DC suicide right. squad. But then I remembered James Gunn is really good at obscure heroes. Mm-hmm. And like, then the, like the critics screening started to roll out. Um, and I've been following this guy on TikTok by the name of Straw Hat Goofy and big Marvel guy. He got into an early screening and uh, of Suicide Squad and he came out. And he says, guys, this is hands down my favorite DC. Is show. he the is he the the black guy that always talks on the uh, like he yeah, holds up yeah. his mic? He does that. He yeah, I like his I like his stuff. I like him a lot. But Straw Hat, really get a mic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> get, get, a, I mean, they're not that much. Um he has like millions of followers and we have like break in, you know, not that many. And we, we've got some, we got some good mics. Come on. Um, but he, him and an, uh, another person that he pulled in were like, yeah, this is an amazing film. And then I was like, okay. So I started reading up a little bit more and there's a character in the film. We talked about him because I had my actors mix up, but he yeah. plays polka dot man. Yes. Um, and that character is in the movie purely because James Gunn went on Google and said, what's the worst DC villain ever? And Polka Dot Man came up and he's like, I want him in the film. And I was like, shit. Yeah. I got to see that. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, um, yeah. Uh, so we, you will definitely get a knee jerk reaction from us probably immediately as we walk out of the theater with that one. Yep. Um, yeah, and then we're, we're hitting, probably, we're, what? yeah. Tell them what we're doing next. We'll probably do a knee jerk reaction off of this one too. Oh yeah, we're, uh, and then after that, we'll probably take a nap, and then we're gonna head <laughs> over to Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan's performing in uh, Milwaukee this yep. Saturday, this coming up Saturday. So, uh, fun-filled this weekend. A... It starts off with the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Neither team I really care about, but I'm just excited to watch football. So I'll watch that Thursday. Head yep. over to Greg's on Friday. Have some cocos, then Suicide Squad. And Joe Rogan. Yeah. And this is this is a Rogan show that was supposed to happen. November. Uh, was it last November or a year ago in November? November was, of 2020. Yeah. Pre-COVID. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had bought these tickets and yep. then the world shut down. Technically, so, Greg, I think we bought those tickets, man. We bought those tickets when you came down for the Shed Aquarium. Yeah, you and I were in line, literally yes. walking into C two E two, the last yes. live C two E two. Yeah, which would have been a year ago, last February. Yes, we're walking in line. I get a notification on my phone: Joe Rogan tickets just went on sale, and you said grab them. Yeah. So I got the best seats we could. Uh, <laughs> I should take that back. I got the best seats we could afford. Right. And then show got delayed. We thought it was going to be canceled. Like. Yeah. And even when they came back, they're like, here are your show tickets. We were like, do we still want to go? Is this going to be a thing? I'm like, yeah. and I'm glad we still are. But, yeah. um, but yeah, and I've got even a fuller weekend. Um, I ended up taking, I, I haven't taken PTO in forever. So I've got PTO all day Friday and all day Monday. Um, oh, okay. Cause my tattoo appointment to finish up the tree has been rescheduled twice now. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be football day off. You coming up Yeah, for steak dinners, movies, Joe Rogan, relax on Sunday. Sounds like a werewolf movie. Yeah. 
tattoo yeah. on Monday. So I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. Yeah. So we might even give a knee, knee jerk reaction with the werewolf movie because. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Because uh, we might be doing it right there from Greg's living room. <laughs> 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 Just a knee jerk reaction on it. Um, clean the house. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So have you heard anybody talking to you about like when season two of he-man's coming or no no i don't have a date um i don't know if they've released a date but i mean the kevin smith thing that i saw yeah was they were putting the finishing touches on those last episodes i wonder if they changed anything i wonder i don't think you can based on As, as far along as they got well, just based on animation schedules, I mean, yeah, if they I were to so. change storylines, I mean, that's when I say finishing touches, like the score, Bear McCready's score was just finished and like tagged onto the episode. So I don't think they can go back. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Look, I, and again, I'm, we both, we both know where we stand on this. I'm not saying Kevin Smith shouldn't. I'm just, I, I just I'm wondering if he's getting pressure, but from what I understand, the people that would give him pressure don't care. Right. Yeah, that's what I he mean. Said. So the people that <clears throat> Master of the Universe is a I don't want to say it's a dead property because there's obviously still some pretty big fans of it, but in reality, um, like I think Kevin Smith breathing any life into it. I mean, even if it is controversial or controversial um everybody's fine with that <laughs> like yeah sure make it make it kind of you know piss off the fan base we don't care let's get some get, get them talking about it oh, i hear the, the case. i hear the live action film is dead ah <sighs> of course it is like no noah centineo was gonna be he-man prince adam and he-man okay and um yeah, I've heard that one nowhere. In fact, all the working out he was doing, which we were told was for He-Man, I think is for Red State. Like, that's that's a movie that he's going to be in. Um, so he was working out with The Rock. That's that's happened a lot, actually. Um, I think that's like the third time a Masters of the Universe has been canceled. Sure. I I think they've tried to do that. Um, it's yeah, like a, yeah, or he's in Black Adam, that's what it is. He, so he was, oh, he plays Adam Smasher. Oh, in Black Adam, yeah. I'm interested to watch Dr. Fate. I'm a yeah, fan of his, me too. Uh, I also like Pierce Bronson, him. so there's a guy that ages well, yeah. Pierce Bronson, lucky, yeah, lucky bastard. Oh, speaking of aging well, this is going away. I'm gonna. You're shaving it all? Not all of it, but definitely going to take it down. I, w- I went to the Renaissance Fair last weekend. And oh, is I, that why you kept it up? Yeah, because I wanted to possibly get some those Viking uh, oh, yeah, beard beads and stuff like that. Yeah. And there was just not a lot of spiking stuff there at all. And no. I get it. It's a Renaissance Fair. But, um, yeah, really nothing. Nothing in the in the likes of that. Even because I was looking at it, I'm like, man, if they have a Viking hand axe or something i may look into that and there was nothing so nothing. a lot of people though a lot more people there than i've seen in years and a lot more people like dressed up and carrying really i yeah. think i think you know cosplay and and dressing up i think mm-hmm. it's becoming it's becoming really easier now like i almost i almost compare it to when I think there was a time you were the only person I knew that wore superhero shirts. Now they're everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Now they're yeah. everywhere. And what you're nobody saying is I was a bad eye about it. Yeah, you're a trendsetter, sir. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. We we had a group, um, it was three families. We all went as a group. And I had the idea of per the Loki series, because I think it was episode one or two. Where they're in the Renaissance, and they actually filmed yeah. that. So you scene. wanted to be. That they filmed that funny. scene at the fun. Georgia Renaissance Festival. So we yeah. made T-shirts, and they had the TVA logo on the front, and they said "Variant" on the back. Yeah, that's cool. And, and we had a lot of people stop and ask us, 
is that the Loki series or they wanted to know where it was yeah. from or something like that. Because, you know, not that, I mean, there were hundreds of people there, but we had 15 of us walking around and people noticed. So yeah. they'd stop and they'd ask. Um, but there were a couple people that didn't get it. Like one woman came up to my buddy and she was like, oh, people must hate you. And he's like, well, yeah, and he's there with his kids and his like his youngest is three. Yeah. They must hate you guys. He's like, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, variant on the back. Are you playing? Are you the Delta variant? He's like, no. Like they're thinking it's a <sighs> like a COVID joke. And we're like, lady, do you know where you are? Yeah. Like, look yeah. around. And yeah. and kind of that type of thing. And I did have one guy ask me, he's like, is that like, a, is, are you making a joke on a COVID thing? I'm like, no. Did you watch the Loki series? No. Well, then you don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple yeah. of people like that. Did you watch the Loki series? I turned it off after half an hour. So I said, then you don't get it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I get it. I think our viewers get it. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, a lot of, a lot of people did. And a lot of people appreciate it. I'm glad we did it. Yeah. It fun. Yeah. I like the uh, shirt that says L O W K E Y. <laughs> Low key. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I want to get one of those shirts. There was uh, another dude walking around. Uh, he had a variant, it was like a, almost like a shop shirt, uh, yeah. but he took a stuffed alligator or like a plastic alligator, yes. like a kid's toy and put, put horns on it and attached yeah. it to his belt. So it was just following him around. Yeah. That was um, funny. you made a very interesting point. I don't think you actually made the point. I think you posted somebody that was making the point and it was, uh, speaking of variants, this Halloween guys. If you're anything like me, you don't actually have to absolutely look the part anymore. You can be a variant of anybody you That's want. That's true. Yeah. I think that was really cool because uh, I, I was the type of guy that was like, no, nope, man, can't put in a Spider-Man suit. I got to get, you know, I got to get, I got to look like a gymnast. Can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. And um, I don't have to do that anymore. Now I can look like nope. you know, any variant in the world. There was a, a dude there. The multiverse. He had a, a very convincing Thor outfit he, and he was big he was taller than me yeah. uh in shape looked the part right um and he and i was standing in the in, in like a kilt shop and i was in there getting some stuff and he came in and he was being helped by a different customer and I, he saw my shirt and obviously i noticed him and he's like oh my mortal brother is here and i was like and i looked at him like new no, different man i killed mine <laughs> i mean just kind of i killed my daughter <laughs> yeah we just played into it. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. If I see him, I, I can see myself wearing that shirt again to like a, like a comic con or something like that. I think that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. That would be cool. Um, yeah. So anybody out there that feels like they can't be Catwoman because they don't look like Catwoman, you can now. You can. You go right ahead. You can even be a male version of Cat. You know, this, you this also brings in, I don't, I'm not even looking at our time. We got time for this. I'm sure we do. Um, doesn't matter. There's an issue that came up actually on our Facebook page that I, I was going to actually talk about this, but we went such a different direction. That... Uh, so <laughs> I posted, I mean, uh, along the lines of a variant, I mean, a lot of people don't cosplay cause they don't feel like they've got the shape for it. And I totally get that. Um, rocking the dad bod for as long as I have. And so I post the thing. I come from a family that has always been very into body shaming people like body shaming. Like, Oh wow. Did you see her? She got big. Or did you see this one? She, oh my gosh. I mean, everything from actresses to people in town. I mean, it was, it was just like a favorite pastime and it always pissed me off. Cause like who gives a shit? And I remember people coming back from vacations and they'd be, you know, all inclusive down in the Caribbean where it's a draw for like international people. Right. And they see like Europeans where Europeans have a very different, uh, idea of body image. So you got women in bikinis and they're like, she was so big. She should not be in a bikini. I'm like, who makes that rules? Who cares? And so I posted something like that on our Facebook page. Yeah. And, um, so one person came out in support of like, but it doesn't matter. It's all about the person. And, uh, the person that posted that I was shocked because they're one of the worst offenders of body shaming that I've ever seen. And then another friend of yours came out and was like, 
Okay, and he kind of agreed, like, yes, you shouldn't be mean about it, but we do have a problem with obesity in this country. Mm -hmm. And I didn't disagree with him, but at the same time, I'm like, you're right, and I'm not saying that. And I think part of our issue is, like, our system has created that. Um, I can go into that in a second. But my point was, if you think someone shouldn't be wearing something because of their body type, it's not your place to say anything. If, no. if, if, if that, and that, they don't try to be mean, but having he's like, but to be honest, I'm like, if your honesty is to come up to me and say like, Hey buddy, you really should be wearing that because of your body type. I would ask him like, do you think I don't know what I look like? Like, do you think that woman in a bikini isn't aware of what her body shape is? Right. I think maybe he was coming from the point of, um, there, I think there's, the plus size models okay which i think are that's fine i in fact i think it's realistic you know um i think what he was trying to get at and it's very hard that's why i I rarely will comment on anything on facebook Mm -hmm. if it's if it's a if it's a um um, controversial issue there's no tone there and i get that yeah not only is there not tone but you you're typing and your thoughts are faster than you're typing. So sometimes you miss, well, shit, I wasn't even trying to talk about this. And all of a sudden I wrote this whole entire paragraph over what I was saying. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is you can't get your full thoughts out on in a comment section. Sure. And I think what he was trying to get at is that he believes, and, and there's a lot of people that believe that there's there's a problem out there where we are actually promoting that it's okay to be overweight in terms of there's nothing wrong with you health wise and that's science proves that that's completely right. false like mm-hmm. that's not good um but it's also not good to drink alcohol it's not good to smoke it's not good to um drive without your seatbelt. i mean <laughs> there's there's tons of things we do on a daily basis that isn't good for us mm-hmm. um but we so what i'm saying is see i was i was going off on a tangent you were coming at it from a body shaming standpoint which you're absolutely right i think he was coming at it from a healthy standpoint of where look i'm not body shaming you but it's not healthy that you're living that lifestyle right which he's factually true but again you're right in terms of saying look dude it's it's none of our business they know that eating seven donuts isn't good for you or they know that you know and you know there are people that have a hard time regardless they could look at a rice cake and they could gain five pounds where some people can look at uh i don't know like a a, a box of twinkies and it like doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter so there's always going to be those genes there's always going to be those body types i think and I think I text this to you. The problem we get is when people think that they need to educate other people Correct. when those people aren't looking to be educated right. is when we fall into a, a, a slippery slope and in a, in a, in a, in factually it's, it's a rude slope. It's like, you don't, you don't do that. Like mm-hmm. you don't think that person smoking knows it's bad for them. You don't think that person drinking, um, you know, every day the last 75 years knows it's bad for them. You don't think the person that is eating because it feels good for them. You don't think they, they, they realize they have some sort of a problem or they have a body image issue or they, right. You know, with that stuff that, that goes in the philosophy that basically, I think I've talked to you about this, that just, just be kind to each other. There's nothing kind about walking up to somebody and saying, you don't belong in that. Right. Nothing kind the, about that. <clears throat> so I was watching some of the Olympics last night. Yeah. And it was uh, women's hammer throw, which I've always been fascinated by what? the hammer throw. So the hammer toss, it's like a shot. Never seen this. Oh, man. So um, what, what does it look like? So it, it is the hammer itself is like a shot put on the Attached end of to a, a string, right? A, a, well, a wire. Yeah. A wire. And they, yeah, I'm and sorry. they, yeah. They swing it around and then they I've go like the now. freaking yeah. top. I've seen it, it it's now. like a, a a weird marriage of discus and shot put. Right. Okay. Um, and they chuck this thing like 75 meters. 
Right. And so I'm watching that. And these women, th- they're in a strength event, right? So well, they have to be big because mass counts. Yeah. I mean, yeah. these, these are, these are women that are thick. And I mean that in the most attractive way possible. Um, these are, these are women that are athletes, you know, so that's your, t- that's your body. Is that what you're saying you're attracted to? Or are you just being, no, nice? no, no. I, I, I'm saying that these, these are just bigger women. Like, okay. They're, they're not stick skinny. They're not 115 or even right. 120. Right. These are, these are just bigger women, and, but that's their profession. I mean, that's right. their Olympic level athletes at, at the top of their game in this event. Um, and what I'm talking about, like if some of these women were to be out there in a bikini, I know people that would say, oh my God, that woman does not belong in a bikini. She's not fit. I'm like, uh, that woman is more fit than probably 99% of the people on this beach. I see what you're saying. You know, you know who gets, you can be too fit as a woman too. There is, um, um, now I'm not talking about bodybuilding, but I've seen, I've heard a lot of body shaming to CrossFitters. Oh yeah. And I'm talking about the. Like the um, uh, the people that compete in the games and that happened in Madison this weekend, um, mm-hmm. those people I've heard have serious problems where they like they go to the beach and they're wearing a bikini like everybody else, but they have like six packs and yep. you know when they they have big thighs and they uh, it's muscular thighs because they're squatting, they're deadlifting, they're yeah. cleaning, they're jerking, they're they're doing all these things, and I've heard that they feel a sense of like, Oh geez, I shouldn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't wear this yeah. or, you know, and, you know, and, and, and God, I just, let me just say this. I feel very bad for women because it's tough out there. Right. No matter what body type you are, the world's convinced you, you're not either, you're either not skinny enough you're, or you're, you know, you're too much or too little of stuff. Yes. Yes. There's never this, Hey, be happy with yourself. You look beautiful. There's never that. Right. Um, and so I, I feel really bad. Um, I feel sorry for women that, you know, are grow up feeling like I, I, I can't look like Selma Hayek. I can't look like, uh, who's black widow. Scarlett Johansson. Yes. Like or Florence Pugh. One of those yes. Guys. Yeah. It either way. I'm just saying like, I, I feel very, I feel sorry for you guys. And I feel like we've done it. Uh, society's done it like we there's certain things that the male eye it catches you know but greg you and i are the first to admit this there's there's a certain type that you're into Mm -hmm. and it seems like you're only into and then there's a certain type where i'm into where i i think i have like seven varieties that i'm into yeah no no no. don't get me wrong i i I mean no i (laughs) do you like other varieties Sure. Yeah. I, okay. It's, you know, there's a glorious variety of, of shapes and sizes out right. there and I, yeah. I find beauty in all of them. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, but when it comes to like preferences, sure. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's that, I mean, some guys like blondes, some guys like brunettes. I mean, there's, right. but that doesn't yeah. mean like you find the other ones just like repulsive or anything. That's like true. That. That's true. That's, That's true. not true. I'm not like that. Right. Um, no, but my point is like if no matter what a person looks like, it's not your job to tell them unless they I mean, if they ask you your honest opinion, but that's them inquiring. Yeah. Um, if you feel the need to comment on somebody's body shape or body type in a negative fashion, that's your own psychosis playing into it. And I don't want to hear it. I mean, you can have those thoughts. That's on you. Um, but if you're bringing that to our conversation, I don't have time for that kind of conversation. Right. I know what you're saying. Um, it's a good point you just brought up, though. If somebody comes up to me, and this is where I've come from. I, I've come from different school. I've come from life, all right, in terms of <laughs> when you came up to me younger and you asked my honest opinion, I would give you my honest opinion, whether you liked it or not. If you asked for it, I'd hand it to you. Mm-hmm. Now, I I pretty much give you what you want to hear in terms in terms of what we're talking about now. If you're talking about like if a guy comes up to me and says, "Dude, I haven't had a job. I've been fired by like seven like seven different companies. You know what's wrong with me? What is it?" I'll 
I'll give it to you. Like, yeah. I'll tell you, this yeah, is yeah. this is what I've noticed about you. Mm-hmm. But if you're telling me, hey, do I look good in this? Sorry, I'm going to always say yes. Because I don't need, I I don't need to make you feel bad. And like, right. at the end of the day, if me telling you that I find you attractive or I think you look nice in that dress, if that's going to make you feel good for however long, awesome. There needs to be more of that in the world. I'm not saying flat out lie, but you don't have to give them all the truth. You know, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't right. have to, you don't have to do anything that's going to make somebody feel bad in a situation that we're discussing about right now, like body image. Mm-hmm. You know, if, she, if you can tell she likes it, she likes the dress. She thinks she feels confident in it, but you don't like it. You don't have to tell her that you don't like it. I don't think, am I wrong? No, not really. I mean, right. that's, I guess that's the only time a lie would be good. <laughs> you know? Like if it, if it doesn't hurt anybody and it makes them feel good, like who cares? Now, if she ends up being cocky about it, then you've created yeah. a monster, but no, I don't know. I, I haven't met one woman that really feels super confident about her body. No. And I, I, I even think I see that when, cause you, you go on social media and there are women that are presenting themselves like they're super confident and they may be, yeah. and that's awesome. But I haven't met one person that's super confident about their body so much that they are, they're not looking in the mirror and finding a flaw in something. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Flaws are there. Yeah. I think what we have to do is we have to adjust our thinking and, and look at the flaws and be like, cool, this is me. Yeah. Which yeah, is that's really the... hard to do. Really hard to do. Mm-hmm. I get it. But I think it's really important. It's, it's, you know, it's important. I know people with, I mean, I've had to discover this term. It's called workout anorexia. Have you heard of this? Yes. Where you, you're, you're not starving yourself, but you're just working out so much. O- overtraining. It, yep. And it just becomes unhealthy, but you have this mindset of no, I can't take a break because if I take a break, I'm going to look terrible. Yeah. A lot of people I know get caught in that trap. Yeah. Because what happens is they'll, I'm trying to give an example. It's very easy to happen in CrossFit because again, these CrossFit athletes, which, okay. Most of the guys in the, I mean, if you just type up CrossFit games, guys or the men's, yeah, you will see just, you will see a bunch of just ripped Adonis mm-hmm. godlike men. Like you were like, Whoa, I, I would love to have that body. Right. And, um, then you get to a gym where the, you've been this guy that's had a dad bod his whole life. And, and you think, damn, I, I, I can get here. And so you watch those guys and see what they do. Well, first off, yeah. they're athletes. They're like at the top of the spear. They're at mm-hmm. the point of the spear. And at the point of the spear, you get benefits, you get great genetics, you get a hands on dietitian lined in, you get, uh, you know, you get these trainers that are putting you on the right path right. where, you know, I, I think I have some very close people to me that are in that exact boat where they think they can't miss a day of training because they right. will, uh, they'll lose it. And you get in this horrible, vicious cycle because you feel like shit because you haven't given yourself rest or you're not properly eating enough to fuel whatever you're burning through. Mm -hmm. I think that that term you used, workout anorexia, is that what? Yeah, workout anorexia because it's the same type of psychosis of someone who just decides I'm not going to eat because I don't want to be fast. Yes, yes. You, You can absolutely get there. I think I've flirted with it thinking to myself like yeah absolutely where i thought i can't take a day off you know this guy would never take a day off so i can't take a day off like you you get in this mindset of of um i can't take a day off because if i take a day off i'm gonna lose something Mm -hmm. i'm gonna lose some sort of gain and it's the exact opposite you should probably rest more than you think you should yeah um well again you hear like guys like the rock yeah who he gets up at three thirty every day and exactly. works out for six hours. Six hours, right? And now, then goes to work to act for the rest of the day, right? Do you remember when you used to uh, work out like at Whitewater? 
Yeah. Okay. It took you about probably what an hour and a half. Um, I was actually a little bit shorter than that, if at all possible. Like if I had the gym and like I could get on all, all my equipment right away. Yeah. And this this is coming from the trainer I had in high school. I would shut my mouth and get to work, and I could be done in forty five minutes to an hour. Okay. All right. Now now you know that there are some guys out there that can. Do what you did in 45 minutes, but it takes them three hours because they're walking around, they're talking, right. they're walking past the mirror a couple of extra times. You know, right. they, you know, and I think maybe that's what the rock does. Not that he walks around the mirror. I'm just saying, I, I, I don't, I can't see him going from 3 a.m. straight through for six hours, not resting, not recovering, not like, no, you can't put you that can't type do that. of, no, you can't. Well, you know, I think probably what he, <clears throat> it it's not straight weights for six hours. Can't be. It he's got to be working in cardio. He's got to be working in stretching, you know, flexibility. Stretch, yeah, stretching and flexibility. And I would bet. I mean, because he's still like I'm pretty sure he still wrestles. Like he's still active in the WWE at times. Yeah. So he's got to do those workouts for. Movement. Well, maybe he does. I bet he does a lot of agility drills. Yeah, a lot of. A lot of, um, a lot of, and like, you can, look, workout is a very f- flexible you know, term. Yeah, because that can, that could be yoga, that could be Tai Chi, yep. that could be, um, that could be, uh, Pilates, that can be just stretching. Um, I've gone through some stretching classes where it's an hour and you are a bucket of sweat. Right. Um, and for those of you that don't think, professional bodybuilders are stretching or oh, yeah. doing those kind of things, you're fucking dumb. Yeah. Because, and that was the mistake that guys in my era made. It's like a mistake of every high school player uh, we, person. I think, cause I was like, no, I need to work out. Yeah. And just lift. And like, I'm going to, I for pick a muscle group and I need to do five lifts for that muscle group. Right. No, no dude, you need to do three. You need to do a, a main lift and maybe two. Well, that's the problem too. That's seriously the problem. I feel that's in high school. The gym is bullshit. Um, and, and what I mean by gym is bullshit is there's not a lot of education behind gym. Like, Oh, you I, mean like gym, like PE, like physical yeah, education. There's not a lot of education. Like I was never properly taught how to work out in high school ever. No, that's a different First class now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, but no one teaches you that, hey, you seem to really like this powerlifting thing. Let me show you what this is about. Right. Hey, you seem to really like the CrossFit thing. Let me show you what this is. I personally think, and it sounds like I'm a, a, a zealot, I think that's the word. Zealot. Or zealot, zealot. Of CrossFit. I, I think that should be taught in high school. People should be taught how to deadlift properly. They should be mm-hmm. taught how to squat properly. They should be taught not to be afraid of those things because there's some doctors out there that tell you you shouldn't deadlift. Right. Well, how the hell are you going to pick your keys off the ground if it falls? That's a deadlift. It's not 500 pounds. I'm not saying that, but it is the same form you use to pick up your keys so you don't hurt your back or you pick up a bucket or you pick up your um, your Home Depot bucket filled with tools because you're guarding. Right. You know? So... Just because I have kids in high school now, there's a class called like um, strength and weight training. That's when, great. It's an elective, but then they have like general PE, which is dodgeball. Not even dodgeball. Just you know, we're gonna do four weeks of badminton. And it's almost like like games that you can play into adulthood. Yes. But we're gonna teach you do, the rules. Do you the remember rules of them doing and inline this. country dancing for PE? Lion dancing? Yes. Uh, we did that. Uh, we did polka. We did straight up polka. Oh fuck! What a horrible thing to inject on junior high kids. Right. <laughs> nope. We had. I remember the uh, PE teacher had a record player that he had to put a microphone next to, and it was oh, put God. on the vinyl. And yeah. Yeah. Nope. We we did that, and it wasn't very long. It was only like a week or two. Yeah. Uh, on an A day, B day schedule. So maybe four classes of four or five classes. Of right. Right. And then done. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. You were saying, but no, I kids. mean that, that was the, and so the, you know, they have different 
different classes electives that you can take now that that fulfill that PE credit. Right. Um, but it's just trying to steer your kids into the right, the right one that was yeah. actually going to teach them normal things. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I feel like that that's where they, because they don't, I just taught a guy two weeks ago how to climb a rope and he thought there was no way he was going to be able to do it. And I just right. showed him the actual form. It doesn't take a lot of strength. It takes Do you skill. know where I learned how to climb a rope? Where, where I actually learned, I mean, I remember in elementary school, my best friend could climb the rope to the ceiling. And yeah. I was like, and I would get on there and I was the kid that would go like one, two, and then yeah. just hang for as long as I could. Yeah. Um, I was also the, the, one of the bigger kids in class. And so I right. couldn't, but I, it wasn't until I saw the, uh, Jonathan Bradis, Chuck Norris movie sidekicks. Okay. When in, that's like 1990. All right. So I'm 12 yeah. where I'm like, and in that, in that film, the kid can't climb the rope until he visualizes Chuck Norris on the rope next to him. And he's like, no, use your feet, wrap the rope around your feet, pinch it off and put the weight on your legs and then yep. use your legs to push up. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Everybody. Been, yeah. It's exactly. it wrong for, but that's my point. That's stuff. my point. You, no one in gym. Somebody should have told me how to do that. Yeah, the gym 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 teacher should have told me. That's what I'm saying. And I don't climb the rope and be like, do it like that, and be like, what did you do? I saw you climb a rope. Right. Yeah. Like the guy when he did it, I was training him. When he did it, he comes out. He goes, holy shit! I go, congratulations, man! You climbed a rope. And he goes, why didn't they teach me this in high school? I go, yeah, I know. I've been (sighs) screaming that like to anybody that would listen. Yeah. But anyway, we're going way off. We're going on tangents here, but this is what we do. Um, we are at a minute 40 into this already, so we should probably okay. cut this. Probably. The only one that's still listening to this is Marshall. So maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe. So my um, kids have started listening. So, Hey Lex. No. Oh. Hello everybody. Just Lex. I think just Lex. Yeah. Just I don't Lex. think, I don't think yeah. the girls, we're not that, that we're not that cool for teenage girls, nor do we want to be at this age. Kind of not. <laughs> you don't want that. That's not our demographic. So. Um, I think we'll end it there. Greg, as always, you got anything to uh, leave us off with? Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. You know, uh, and just like we do, like when I'm looking up shit on the computer here as we're talking, um, I'm checking my sources. You know, you got to do that. Make sure you're not just spouting bullshit. Uh, the only one is you got to know your audience. We talked about that when you want to go up to the bikini uh, wearing mom and be like, are you sure you want to wear that? You know what she does and shut the fuck up about it. So, uh, know your audience. And then as you're going through there, always rely on part three, which is don't be a douche. There you go. So for the Greg, this is Johnny, everybody. Thank you for listening. Please. One more time, hit like, and subscribe. It really helps us out. Everybody have a great weekend. See you soon. uh, Yeah, I'll see you real soon. And um, that's it. Podcast out. Take care, everyone. See you.